What's up YouTube, it's your boy Michael and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you how I turned my blog CMS into a multi-tenant site. Now I kind of struggled coming up with a very clean definition of a multi-tenant site but essentially a multi-tenant site is a site that allows you to create, manage multiple different sites on one centralized platform, right? So that's what I turned my blog CMS into and I think it's better if I show you um, than just trying to explain it because it is kind of a hard concept to explain. So when you go to my blog site, it's now called Tzahafi. Tzahafi is writer in Amharic, which is Ethiopian language. Um, when you go to Tzahafi.xyz or if you go to cms.rasmike.xyz and you go to dashboard, you know, authenticate and all that stuff, you are met with a dashboard where you can see sites and articles. Now, I can publish, I can create a new site, right? So I can go to the sites tab. I just like that hover animation. But anyway, I can create a new site. Let's call it YouTube. Uh, YouTube. No, please subscribe and like and comment. Thank you. And then the subdomain is going to be YouTube. We won't have a logo for now. I'll just click submit. So I just created a new site. And notice here it says YouTube.Tahafi.xyz. So if I click on this, I have some settings I can tweak. I can change the name, the description, the subdomain. And then if I click here, it's going to take me to YouTube.Tahafi.xyz. And notice this is a whole different site, right? This is not the same as Tahafi.xyz, right? So I just built a whole different site um, using uh, my multi-tenant uh, blog CMS, right? Well, now multi-tenant platform. And what's cool about it is the way I've designed it is, is originally, if you guys watched the previous video, I'll link it down in the description. I created this so it could be a CMS for me. But not only is it a CMS, which I can call using an API and have blogs render on my website, but I can make this my blog site in it of itself, right? So I'll, I'll show you an example. So we have the YouTube um, site. Let's create a document called YouTube doc and we're just going to create a quick article and then we're just going to let me copy paste someone's tweet. All right, I'm just going to copy web dev Cody's tweet. Okay, hit submit, save changes and then let me publish this article. So I'm going to say YouTube doc subtitle the same thing slug. I'll just make a YouTube doc keywords. I'll just pick whatever and then an uh, upload cover. Let's just pick a random image, maybe this right here, and let's just upload this. And while this is uploading, should take a few seconds. Perfect. I'll select the author category. I'll pick the YouTube doc document, the one we just created and see, I can select which site I want this document to be published to. I'm going to submit it to publish it to my YouTube site, hit submit. And if I check dashboard, I should see the articles there. Perfect. And now if I go to YouTube and I refresh, ta-da, I now have a blog on my new website. And if I click the blog, I can read it. This is awesome. This is super cool. I can create blog sites on the fly very easily. Now, one of the things that I plan on doing next is having uh, the giving the ability to add custom domains. So imagine you had your own domain and you just forwarded that domain to here. So that's what I'm going to be working on next. But what's interesting is let me show you the code, because the way this works is Next.js and Vercel make it very, very simple. So all the magic happens in two places in the middleware. And then this I'm going to show you right here and in this folder right here called domain. So this is essentially the new sites that are being rendered. It's it's this folder right here. But let's start at the middleware. So we're going to go line by line. I asked Chad GBT to comment at each step so it could be as clear as possible. And I'll zoom in even a bit more. So in the middleware file, I have this clerk middleware function. This is where all the action happens. So step number one is I get the host name. And how I do this is I, you know, from the request from the headers, I get host and I should get something like mic.com or test.mic.com. All right. So after that, we're going to create a variable called current host. And then we do a check here. Basically, we're checking if we're in production or local host. If we're in production, we're going to uh, initiate the base domain, which I have in my environment variable. And then what I'm essentially going to do is from the host name, I'm going to replace 
the base domain. So think of it this way. Let's say the host name is test. Um, let's say the host name is test.mic.com. Essentially, what this is doing is this is going to replace the base domain and just have test. So I'm just going to extract the subdomain here. And this is going to be um, this is going to equal current host. And then if it's in development, I just do it to localhost 3000. Perfect. So then this is what we do. We check if there is a current host. If there is no current host, then I'm probably just uh, firing off the home page. Uh, right. So I'm just going to be forwarded to next response dot dot next. So imagine I just go to Tafi.xyz, it's just gonna bring me here, right? But then let so assuming that I do have a current host, I'm going to pass current host to this function called read site domain. And essentially, what this does is this reads from my superbase database and pulls all the information regarding that site domain, that site subdomain, right? So I'm gonna get that in the response, and then I handle the case where there's there is no subdomain again. Just take me back to the home page. But let's say there is information, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to extract a tenant uh, subdomain, which I would get from response uh, dot subdomain. And this is where the magic happens. If I do have a tenant subdomain, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a rewrite, a next response rewrite, and I'm going to create a new URL and I'm going to basically do slash tenant subdomain. And what this does is this slash tenant subdomain is going to take the user here to this folder right here. So this folder is essentially, yeah, so youtube.safi.com is essentially slash YouTube, right? But the URL has been changed. So it's youtube.safi.xyz. So everything that you see here is in this folder. One thing I forgot to share with you um, that is very important that you have to do in order for the multi-tenant platform to work is when you're adding your domain on Vercel, and again, Vercel just handles this so beautifully. When you add your domain, you're going to have to add asterisk dot your domain dot X, Y, Z. This asterisk basically catches every uh, subdomain that your users could create. So it's very, very important that you do this step. Again, you go on Vercel, uh, you know, I have the pro tier, even if I'm pretty sure you can do this on the free tier, go to the specific project, go to settings, domains, then asterisk dot your URL, right? So I have www.tzahafi.xyz, tzahafi.xyz, and then you have to have asterisk dot tzahafi.xyz. Don't forget to do this step, right? So all this happens in the middleware. And I'm not going to lie, even though it's not a lot of code, it took me a second to understand this, right? It took me quite a, a bit to understand this. And all the content that Versal had created around their platform starter kit is kind of outdated. Um, and like they don't have great explainers on it, if I'm going to be honest. So it took a little bit of digging, but this works. So if I take you to the domain folder and we go to layout, essentially what I'm doing here is the I have params the domain I do the same thing again I read the site domain information right and then I have my meta tags for SEO and basically this is a regular layout folder a rate layout file sorry and in the pages again because I have that uh, domain as a parameter I get the domain information but not only that I also get all the articles and then I render out all the articles here and which is why you can see the blog here and what's awesome is I'm rendering all my blogs from my own CMS. So this has essentially become a whole blogging platform where I have a CMS built in, but I can also have a separate blog site if I wanted to. Right. So again, how does the CMS work? I create documents. Those documents um, can then be published with an author in a category that I create before I publish the article. I have an option to attach them to a site. This site can, I can publicly share if I want to, if not, I, I don't have to. Um, so not only do I have my own CMS, uh, because I don't use any other CMS platform, I use this one, but I also have turned this to a multi-tenant blogging site and regarding how to create the site and stuff. It's pretty simple. Essentially what I'm doing, I, I can show you the code here. This is where I create the site. I have this function right here and it's just a simple form. I basically, you know, get the site name, site description, subdomain, logo, and I push that to my Superbase database, right? And that's where all the information is stored and all the awesome stuff happens 
and the middleware. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is how you build a multi-tenant site. So check it out. Um, launch your blog. Let me know if there are any other features you want me to build. I might actually turn this to a product, which is pretty exciting. One thing I will ask, though, is all the code is on my GitHub. So you can clone this, build this, contribute to this. You could do whatever you want with this code. It's all on my GitHub. Link will be in the description down below. It would really mean a lot to me if we got over 150 stars. So make sure to go start, build on top of it, use it. Let me know what you think. And that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.